Hello everybody, Brad Johnson here. In this video, we're going to be talking about the subject of resolving your mental trauma in no time. Well, Brad, how can you say such a thing? There are people that go to psychiatrists, that go to psychologists, who pay thousands and thousands of dollars to counselors and therapists, and they have to basically spend months or even years trying to get through their trauma. Basically, in other words, trying to talk it out until they don't care about it anymore. Well, you might as well uh, see yourself as a snail trying to move yourself all the way up to the top of Mount Everest by doing that. Okay? It's not to say that it doesn't help, but that is the long way approach. right? Because you are going to be taking months, you are going to be taking years looking into something on a psychiatric level, on a psychological level, and feeling like, yeah, I just need to get through all this stuff, I need to talk all this stuff, and blah, 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 blah. I'm basically telling you that you are able to identify heavy mental traumas within yourself and utilizing the simple methods that I've created for free on this YouTube channel, such as the release ball method, such as prana transmission technique that you can find in my YouTube playlists. But being able to work together with this, helping you to identify where the source of your trauma is, is going to help you to clear this away in no time. <clears throat> now, I'm not just meaning <clears throat> the idea of no time as it being quickly, but the idea that you're able to just simply identify an event that is frozen in time. And that is exactly what you're letting go of. So it comes into the idea of a double meaning. So looking at it in the nature of it being in no time. Now I've spent years developing several different types of healing practices, one getting better than the other, being able to identify where these traumas lie. I've worked with thousands of people from all over the world, looking at all types of different traumas and looking intuitively into them to discover exactly where a lot of these traumas lie. And with cooperation, we've been able to detect that. I've had uh, people who have had serious sexual assault, who have had all kinds of rape trauma, who have had, again, uh, falling out with family, financial crisis, PTSD, etc. over the years. And the key that I give them is being able to work together in discovering where the trauma lies. Because a lot of us think that we're looking at this stuff in, in, uh, in adulthood. And adulthood isn't really where you want to look at it. If I'm going to give you guys a pie chart here, okay, let's draw a little circle here. And if we say that this is the circle of trauma, and where it originates. Well, here's this center point here, and here's a small slice right there. Okay? And there's all of this here left over. All of this here that's left over is childhood. Okay? It really all stems from childhood. Okay? Small amount here could be adulthood. It's a very, very small piece. We are traumatized when we're kids. It's the simple nature of the beast here. We're looking into the idea that all of our trauma comes from childhood. And that when we really pay attention to the aspects of what this trauma represents, right? The feeling that I've been sexually hurt, the feeling that I have a hard time forgiving myself because, right? I can't forgive myself because, okay? So I can't resolve this because. And just being able to talk to a person and being able to understand exactly what they say, right? Understand exactly what they're going through and finding out what their resistance is, I can actually help to discover what that problem of that trauma is. Okay? Because as I've talked about, we really just have four traumas within ourselves. We have that of abandonment. Okay. We have abuse. We have rejection. And we have addiction or the need to escape. Okay. Addiction or escape. 
These are the four traumas. We want to run away from things. We want to get a fix on something to try and accommodate our insecurities, to accommodate our pain. Right? We want to uh, try and get approval from other people. We want to try and appease other people because if I don't do that, then I'm going to face rejection. We want to basically feel like we need to control everything because we're the victim. And if I can't control everything, oh my god, I get triggered and I'm reminded of my wounded abuse. I need to seek security. I can't trust myself. I need somebody else to give me security. I need to depend on somebody else. And if I can't depend on anybody else, oh my goodness, I'm finished. Okay? And that's abandonment. So we have these four traumas all together. And of course, they are linked to the three core emotions, which is anger, sadness, and fear. Okay. So those are the three root or core emotions. There's of course other sub-emotions past that, jealousy, rage, aggression, uh, anything else that you want to put on there. Okay. All these sub-emotions that are kept down here, anxiety, right, uh, nervousness, etc. But even when we look at these four traumas, it all comes down to one thing. It comes to survival. I'm fighting to survive. Okay? Survival is the one big, gigantic nugget that is responsible for all of this. Okay? It's the survival program. If I don't do this, I will die. If I don't think in this way, I will die. If I don't act on this, I will die. If I don't do this, I'll die. That's really what survival represents. If I don't, I'll die. That is the very one major thing that is keeping all of these things alive within yourself, is survival, right? You're afraid to die. Some people will say, well, Brad, I just, I'm not too afraid of, you know, leaving this physical body and, and going back into spirit, and so that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not talking, you, you actually think at times you want that, because it's going to end your suffering. But it's not. Okay? But that's not the key here. That's not the idea of when we look at the fear of death. Because the fear of death really just relates itself to survival. And as long as you are clinging to that survival, I can't do this or I'll die. If I don't take care of this matter, I'm going to die. I'm going to croak, right? And everything's going to be horrible. And that's why you continue to feed yourself that fear. It's the one survival program that utilizes these capsules that represent trauma that then creates these subcapsules of emotion. Now, emotion is not a bad thing, right? Some teachers will tell you that you need to clear away your feelings, you need to clear away your emotions. You can't do that. That's not possible. Okay? It's the tendencies that are using these emotions in the way that they are. Okay? Anger and sadness and fear are not negative. Okay? It's the tendencies behind how we use those things that represent their orientation. Okay? So when you're angry because you're, you're, you're furious with yourself and you can't forgive yourself, it is the tendency behind the anger that's causing the problem. When you're sad about something and you're not willing to get better and you're hopelessly depressed and you feel like you can't do anything, it's not the sadness itself, it's the tendency behind the sadness. When you're afraid of something, you're just so completely afraid and nervous that you can never really get anything off the ground. <clears throat> it's not the fear that's the problem, it's the tendency behind the fear. Okay? So as I said, everything really occurs in childhood. Now, some people may say, well, Brad, I don't really remember my childhood that much. I don't really remember it. I can't really recall it. What can I do? Well, the most important thing is I create a rule. We only work with what we are aware of. Okay? So you're only working with what you are aware of. And you want to go as far back in regards to what you are aware of that's causing that trauma in the first place. Okay? So if you can, for example, only go back to when you're 14 years old, because there is a serious situation there, and that's exactly what we work with. Okay? 
So I can remember back to when I was 14 years old, and I almost got hit by a car. And I was just in a state of anxiety. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to leave the house. I was just sweating bullets, and I couldn't deal with it. Okay? So I would work with that person. We'd do the release ball method. We'd do the prana transmission technique. And I would just work on shrinking down that fear. Because again, if I'm 14 years old and I'm afraid of getting hit by a car, that goes right under abuse here. Okay? I felt victimized. I felt like I just I couldn't even go to that road again. I just didn't feel comfortable even leaving my house. I was so afraid I was going to get hit by a car again. Okay? I've actually had feelings like that in the past as well. So the key here is in that sense, if we feel that, that tendency coming up, okay? If I'm using this tendency here as a star, okay, here's my 14-year-old event, what is it linked to here? Is it abandonment? No, it's not really abandonment. Is it rejection? No, I'm not rejecting a car here. Is it an addiction or an escape? Not really, no. It feels more like an abuse because I felt victimized. I felt hurt. I felt wounded. I felt like I was almost going to get hit. I was going to get splattered by this car. That's the trauma. Okay? So then I would use release ball technique, taking that person through the release ball, and we shrink that down. We would dissolve that. Or we could use prana transmission technique. We can shrink that down. We get it smaller and smaller and smaller. And we work together with repetition. You work together with repetition, and you shrink that down all together. And after a couple of repetitions, you're not afraid of being hit by that car anymore. Because what happens if we don't nip this in the bud, if we don't take care of this at the age that this happened, and here we are, let's say, as 45 years old. Okay? So I'm 45 years old right now. This is something that happened when I was 14 years old. What happens is it starts to grow. The vortex of itself gets larger. And other fears start coming together when you're 45 years old. Because this has been left unresolved. Nothing has been done. Okay? Even if you go to therapy in that way, you still feel a fear of having, uh, being hit by a car. You see, again, like I said, there's nothing wrong with talking out these things. But talking out these things can only do so much. It's much more of, again, the snail climbing Mount Everest resolve. It's not a very good method. I'm not trying to offend psychologists out there. But again, I've worked with people independently for the last 15 years about working together with these different types of modalities. This isn't that great. It's just not that good of an idea. It may help some people, but it's not effective. Right? And then they try to prescribe drugs to them and everything like that. And that's not the answer. Okay? Psychiatry, any of that stuff, it's not the answer. So this is what happens energetically. Right? We just continue to manifest other problems within our life that are simply reminder-based events. Okay? They're just trigger points. Right? So here's the feeling of getting hit by a car, and I've had almost other calls. I've rode in a car with a friend, and he almost got hit. Right? He didn't get hit, but he almost did. Right? And I'm seeing all of these circulations of events happening more and more and more. And here I am at age 45, and I'm still terrified of even being behind the wheel of a car. It's escalated, it's grown, it's expanded. Because it comes back and the circle gets bigger, and the circle gets bigger, and the circle gets bigger. Because this is the source. Okay? So you're working with what you're aware of. As you work with what you're aware of and you start to dissolve that away, more things are going to come up. The subconscious is going to bob other tendencies surrounding similar events to this that will actually go back into your younger years. Okay? Oh, now I remember, I was five years old and my mom almost got into a car accident. But I hardly remembered it because I was traumatized so much. I was traumatized to the degree where I feel like I just completely blacked out. But this memory is coming back to me because I've resolved this one. I resolved that memory. And now we go back to that five-year-old who nearly who blacked out because his mom uh, driving in a car, almost got hit, and he just felt like he lost it. He was so terrified that he just blocked out. And then we start working with that. So, okay, I want you to write that down. I want you to be aware of that. Okay? That's what we're working now with the release ball technique. We're putting all that in. I said, okay, Joe, I don't want you to be Joe when you're releasing all of this. I want you to step out of your body. 
I want you to step out of your mind, and all that you are is what you truly are, and that's awareness. Okay? Awareness is healing everything. So we put everything relating to that trauma inside the ball, we measure its intensity from 0 to 10, and now we're working together as awareness. Right? It's just like we're floating, we're like these floating eyeballs, and we're just looking at the ball, and we're surrendering, letting go, surrendering, letting go, surrendering, letting it go. Dropping all of the proverbial bags that are responsible for you feeling like you are identifying with this trauma. And you're able to let it go. Because all it is, is a memory. All it is, is a thought. All it is, is a pocket of time. It's all just parts of the mind. This is the idea, is that we're freezing it. We're freezing it in no time. And we're letting it go, we're relinquishing it, we're surrendering it completely. We release it, we check in with ourselves, does this problem still exist within me? No, Brad, it's completely gone. Great. How do you feel now? I feel so much lighter. I feel great. Good. So, we took something that happened back when you were five years old, and you're 45 right now. You lived with something for 40 years, and we cleaned it out in two minutes. That's what I'm talking about. This is the myth that so many doctors and psychiatrists and what have you, therapists, think. It takes a lifetime, right? It's a lifetime commitment to get well. To get well again. And you know what I say to that? BS. That's bullshit. Okay? No. It does not. It simply takes you coming out of your identity, out of your body, out of your mind, so that you can see things as the observer, so that you can learn to see things as the witness. I have people who have never really gone into the deep work, who I've been able to do the release ball technique on, and within one single turn, under five minutes, they have cleared away 20, 30, 40 years of intense traumas within five minutes, okay? Because there is a strategy, it's a strategy that a lot of these therapists don't know about, and that is being able to take yourself out of the body, take yourself out of the mind, and be awareness, right? And I guide you through that process. Where again, we're looking at these tendencies that you have, okay, we've been able to discover some of the childhood traumas here that you have, because like I said, we want to work with childhood. We want to go into childhood and as deeply as possible and just work with what we're aware of. Now we have those tendencies. Okay? Now we create the ball. Now through our awareness, everything is being deposited into that ball. You guys can follow along with uh, the playlist videos, the two videos of the release ball technique. It's one of the simplest practices ever. Okay? And we're just depositing those tendencies, those traumas, those emotions, those feelings. Okay? Those events are being deposited in the ball. We measure it on a scale from 0 to 10. How intense is this? Over oh, as a 10 out of 10 for sure. Okay, Pop that into the ball as well too. Now I take them in through an exercise. I say, okay, I want you to step out of your body. Okay, You do this every single night you go to sleep. Okay, You're stepping out of your body. It's not like I'm zonking you out. I just want you to feel like you're just stepping out of your body. Okay, And you look back at your body and you realize, oh my goodness, my body is indeed temporary. It's something that comes and goes. And then I tell you to step out of the mind, just like you're looking at a sphere with all of this debris within it. And you're looking at it and saying, oh my goodness, all the mind is really is just a cluster of thoughts, feelings, emotions, and sensations. That's it. So when I've taken you out of the body, when I've taken you out of the mind, what remains? All that remains is permanent awareness. All that remains is you being the permanent witness. And now you're holding that ball with all of those tendencies, with all of those traumas. And as the witness, as awareness, I'm coaching you to letting everything go, to soften it all away, because Joe's not removing this. Okay, Joe is not doing the healing. Awareness is. So you're not seeing yourself as your personality. You're not seeing yourself as your identity. You are seeing yourself as awareness, because that's what you truly are, okay? And I take you through 
that process and we surrender everything that's contained inside that ball that represents traumas, emotions, thoughts, memories, situations, sensations, and that's what happens to the ball. Once you're able to surrender everything, okay, release it, that's what happens to the ball. Okay. And we check in with ourselves, does this problem or do these problems still exist within me? No, oh, they're completely gone. Fantastic. We did this in under five minutes. Okay? So I want you guys to get out of the myth of thinking that this is a lifetime commitment that, bro, this is going to take me years. Yeah, if you follow the snail example. Okay? A snail trying to climb up Mount Everest. It's going to take you years. I'm telling you something that's going to take you minutes. Because that's how powerful this is. Because traditional therapists with their traditional psychiatric methods are doing this the snail way. It's not to say it's the wrong way, but it's the snail way. Right? You're taking the scenic route as the snail, trying to make your way up Mount Everest. Okay? Whereas I'm telling you, you snap your fingers, you're at the top of the mountain. You're able to teleport up there. Because you now realize that this takes no time. It's the ability to freeze trauma by looking at it as awareness. Awareness just freezes everything. Right? It just freezes that. It's like a, a situation frozen in ice. And you're now letting it all go. You're surrendering it to it completely as I coach you. And all that remains now is that empty ball. It's the same thing with prana transmission technique. We're doing ohm chanting and we're shrinking it, and we're shrinking it, and we're shrinking it. And it fades away. Whatever free method you want to use is up to you. But the key to liberating yourself is to clean your childhood up as best as you can. Because like I said, <clears throat> once you get the idea of this 14-year-old situation where you felt like you nearly got hit by a car, and then you remember your 5-year-old situation with your mom, where you almost got hit by, by a car as well too, and you were so traumatized by it that you blacked out, and that's exactly what we released. <clears throat> After we released that five-year-old incident, that person's not afraid of cars anymore. He's able to walk out in the street, he's able to cross the crosswalk, he's able to get behind the wheel of a car, and his anxiety is gone. Proud, how is that possible? Because he released everything. He released everything pertaining to awareness. Awareness was the cure to everything that represented these traumas and clearing them out altogether. <clears throat> this is how you're resolving your mental trauma in no time. You resolve it because you are working with it as awareness. You're working with it as your true being. Awareness is who and what you truly are. Okay? You are not the body. You are not the mind. We have a body. We have a mind. It's a support system. But we are not identifying as the body. We are not identifying as the mind. We work with it. We integrate with it. We're playing with it. Right? We're living with it, but we are not it. That's the key. Okay? So it's the middle ground. So the more that you're able to look at these areas of childhood, uh, then that's how you're going to really resolve yourself. Okay? It's not going to come through your adulthood. Okay? So, okay, I remember, I remember a tra uh, trauma here. I'm, I'm 30 years old right now, and I remember this part here when I was 25. Okay? It's not to say we can't resolve it. That's fine, but that's not the root. Okay? The root is always here. It's in your childhood. Okay? Your childhood, again, can be, the idea would say, between 1 to 14 years. Okay? That's basically the core childhood years. 14 to 21 could be the later childhood years, because okay? you're still kind of a child there. So I'd say anywhere from 0 to 14 years, from whatever you're able to remember, within the first 14 years of your life, that's childhood. Okay? And if you can't do that, that's okay. Just work with what you are aware of, right? Maybe I can only remember back to when I'm 17 or when I'm 15, okay? Good, that's no problem. Go ahead and clean those out. So the whole idea here is we just start to clear out what we're aware of. As those things start getting cl cleared out, the subconscious starts bobbing up these other tendencies that have been buried for a long time. I use the analogy of the pile of laundry. Right? So here's a basket of laundry 
We've got all of this laundry here just piling up. And so we're aware of what's here in the basket. This basket here is not even visible. It's just, you can't see what's in the basket. So we start clearing away all this stuff here at the top of the basket, representing traumas, often things that will come in our adulthood. Right? Then we start seeing all of this getting pushed up. And we're seeing nasty, ugly, filthy pieces of laundry that we didn't even know were ever in the basket. But they're there. And those memories come up. Okay? You can never really lose a memory. Because a memory is a complete and total intangible thing. You can never really lose it. Okay? You're just traumatized. right? You basically have this veil of fog around you. Because you are emotionally compromised by that trauma. You're mentally traumatized, you're emotionally compromised, and you can't see it because that fog that's there. What happens when I take that fog away? When that fog goes, what happens? You're able to see what was once veiled from you. You're now able to see what can now be revealed, what was previously restricted from you because of that fog. Okay? Everything starts to bring itself back up. And so now you're looking at these ugly, nasty, filthy, smelly piles of laundry that you didn't even know were there. And that's what the subconscious does. It's like bobbing a cork. It pops up. That's what we're doing. Okay? So, even when I've worked with a lot of people over the years, they too say, oh, Brad, you know what? Me trying to do this, there, there's so many traumas in my life. There's so many things. Like, how could I possibly get all this done very, very quickly? I mean, it's going to take me years if you do the snail version. And I'm not teaching you the snail version. I'm teaching you a quicker version. I'm teaching you the no time version here, okay? Which is the idea of working with your childhood, which is the idea of getting into the heart of the matter, right? It's not about the idea of just saying, okay, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm fearful. Okay, you're angry about what? You're sad about what? You're fearful about what? I'm fearful about people re uh, rejecting me. No. Oh. There we go. That's great. Our goal is to get into any of these. Okay? It's not to get into here. Okay? This is why I say, okay, I'm angry. I'm angry about what? I'm sad. I'm sad about what? I'm fearful. I'm fearful about what? Okay? Just playing with these is going to take you a long time. Okay? That's the emotional level. Right? If I have a triangle here, we have three levels to that triangle. Emotions is right here. Traumas is right here. Survival is right here. Okay? I call this level one, level two, level three. The emotional, the mental trauma, and the transitional, or the survival program. Okay? And all that's happening is that we're spending so much time down here. Oh, I want to clear away my emotions. I want to clear away my emotions. Okay, you can do that, but that's going to take you a long time. When you start moving up here, this is something that can get better within days or weeks. Okay? When you get up here, you can clear this up in less than a day. Okay? So it's being able to get out of level 1 and coming into level 2. That's really the common area. I don't expect you guys to jump to level 3 just yet. Okay? We go to level 2 and we start processing all of these things. By processing, I mean you're, wearing, you're aware of these tendencies that you have and you start clearing them away altogether. As you start clearing them away more and more because you're using something very simple like prana transmission technique or the release ball method, you're now looking into all of these things within your childhood. And it really just comes down to about three or four traumas. Right? You basically just have about three or four big traumas in your childhood. You clear away those roots, you're able to clear away everything now. You've completely liberated yourself. That's basically it. I've done this myself, right? I've gone into my childhood, and really there was only about three or four big traumas that affected a multitude, a mountain of other issues within my life. Three or four. That's it. Okay? And again, that really relates to the four here. Yes, I've had abandonment when I was little. I've had abuse when I was little. I've had rejection when I was little. I've had the feeling of escaping. I've had addiction to, to chocolate and to uh, pop and all that stuff, right? There was an addiction to that because I was trying to fill a void. Right? So I was clearing all these things away. As I started to clear all these things away in childhood, oh my God, everything's so much easier now. I can just 
clear this away, clear this away. Anything in adulthood that happens, I can clear it away, I can clear it away. Because my body is being refreshed, it's being renewed, it's being revitalized. I'm taking out all of these hurdles. And in its place, the body can now open up these floodgates of energy, and my body can start healing itself. It's all it takes, okay? This is not a multi-year journey. You're going voluntarily the snail's path, and you don't have to. This can be resolved quickly, okay? It's up to you. You can resolve this within days. You can resolve this within weeks. You can resolve this within months. It's up to you. It's your own pace. But you do not have to feel like this is a lifetime journey. Oh my God, Brad, I have had all this, this uh, understanding. I don't know who I am, and blah, blah, blah. Well, you're just saying that because you're talking to yourself as identity. You're not talking to yourself as awareness. Okay? The only reason you're stuck is because you're addicted to a body and a mind. You identify with a body and you identify with a mind. You identify with your thoughts. You identify with your problems. You identify with your emotions. You identify with your hurt. You identify with your victimization. You identify with your abandonment. You identify with your rejection. You identify with your addictions and your escape. You identify with all those things. It's why you're in a rut. Because it all stems from here. It all stems commonly from the first 14 years of your life. And you didn't have that level to discern. Right? That happens to kids. We're sponges. We absorb everything when we're little. Okay? Our mom and our dad does, does something very ridiculous, and we absorb that. Okay? It's not the nature of heredity. There's no such thing as heredity. Brad, are you serious? Yes. It's magnetism. Okay? It's you absorbing tendencies. It's the idea of influence. And that absorbs into you. The way that you even make yourself to be in this body is because of magnetic influence, not because of heredity. Okay? You could say it's something karmic, but it's nothing to do with heredity. There's no such thing as heredity. It's a myth. All there is is magnetism. Here you are. Your body looks the way it is because of influential magnetism, because of what you are able to absorb while you are in the womb of your mother while your father is around, why his energy field is also working together with you. His DNA is working with you. Her DNA is working with you. And everything represents the nature of absorption. This is magnetic absorption. There's no such thing as heredity. Right? So it's all just the idea of magnetism. Which means you have the ability to completely refine yourself. Okay, I'll give you guys an example. A few years ago, I had size 13 shoes. Guess what size I'm right now? Size 11. Okay, I reversed that. My facial features have changed over the years. And if I was basically sticking the guns with hereditary, well, your, your face shouldn't change at all. Nevertheless, my facial features change. My ears used to be out to here, and then they folded back in. Okay? My eyebrows have changed in regards to their shape. Okay? So the body and the contours of the body start to change because you change. You start clearing away the magnetic influence, the magnetic association, the sympathetic resonance relating to those who have been major players within your life, who have had a major role to play within your life. You're letting that go. And now you start shaping yourself more so into your own acclimatization of how you appear, of how you see yourself. Okay? It's all magnetics, guys. We're just playing with magnets. It's all we're doing here. Okay? So this is helping you, that when you work with, together with your childhood and you start clearing all these things away, you're going to see how your body changes. You're going to see how you change, physically, emotionally, mentally. So it's very important that you are taking this into mind, that this is not a lifetime commitment to get well. That this is not going to take you years. This can take you days. This can take you weeks. This can take you months. It's all based upon what you're ready to resolve. The, the commitment needs to be there, but it's the commitment to get well. It's the commitment to get better. And it's utilizing those simple free techniques that I have on my YouTube playlists. Okay? Whether it's prana transmission technique, 
the release ball method, which I highly recommend, okay? whether it's BCR technique, whether it's cord removal healing, okay? you have options here that are free to use this and clear it away. Okay? So that when you're done, everything that was on your mind here completely disappears. Right? It disappears because you no longer give it validity. You no longer give it value. You no longer associate it with identity. And you're now a clean slate. Okay? And now when challenges arise in the times ahead, you're able to resolve them. So I was able to resolve the biggest, most horrific tragedies of my childhood, and I can resolve anything now. Right? It's not to say that you won't be without problems, but you'll know how to deal with those problems very quickly because you've handled the beasts and you've cleared them out. Right? So it's all about the idea of working with yourself. Just work with what you're aware of and clear it out. And as you clear it out, more things will just start to naturally pop up in the appropriate time it needs to. When those things pop up, have a notebook handy. Document it. Right? Write these things down. Create a notebook. Follow it throughout the day. How am I doing? How am I feeling right now? What situations have arised? Keep track of it. When something arises, now you know how to clear it away. We are completely letting go of these things, not because we want to be relieved of them, but we want to set ourselves free. Whenever you are letting these things go, you're surrendering to them. You are completely terminating them. We're rendering them absent altogether. So continue to work together with anything that arises, work with your notebook, keep track of these things, and make yourself as crystal clear as the board here, where there's nothing that remains that represents identity. You are a free being. It is who and what you truly are. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll speak to you again in the next video. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaskar, and may it be well with you. Bye for now.